Michael Clark, who's joining me again in the studio. Uh, Michael, just outline for our viewers uh, the contours of the relationship between Russia and China over the last 12 months, and indeed, how significant is this 12-point plan from China? Yes, I mean, China won't condemn Russia outright. There have been three big votes in the United Nations in the General Assembly. The last one was this week. And they've, China's always lined up with the, the neutrals. They've abstained, so they won't condemn Russia. But they are being careful not to offer too much help. They haven't offered any military support so far, not outright military support. And they've sort of restrained the, the Russians from talking too much about nuclear weapons and boasting about nuclear issues. And so there's a, there's a close relationship um, between Russia and China, um, but it's not, it's not absolutely unconditional at all. Um, and this 12-point peace plan is unacceptable to Ukraine and to the West because it says there should be a ceasefire immediately. Well, that means that the Russians keep all of the gains they've just made. They keep all, the, all their conquests. Um, but there are at least five points out of this 12-point plan that the West and the Ukrainians would agree with on prisoner swaps, on humanitarian aid, on making nuclear, uh, uh, um, nuclear bases safe the nuclear, civil nuclear power stations safe within um, Ukraine and not making nuclear threats. So there's quite a lot in this peace plan which the West will go along with, but the essence of the plan is unacceptable because it basically means that the Russians would win. OK, all right, but a bit more nuance in it than yeah. on first inspection. Uh, another development is that the Belarusian president, Lukashenko, is going to China on a three-day <clears throat> visit. What, realistically, could he achieve there? Yeah, I mean, not so much, really. Uh, I mean, in a way, this is the, the Chinese, I think, indicating that they're not only dealing with Russia, they're dealing with another country that's involved in the conflict. Um, I mean, Belarus is, has, is not important to, to China in any real way. They've got some investments there, but it's not so many. Um, but really, this is China indicating that they're thinking in regional terms, not just in terms of their relationship with Putin. So I think it, it, it diffuses criticism in a way that they're favouring Putin too much. And, you know, diplomatic visits are diplomatic visits. But of all the people who might go to represent Putin, Lukashenko is the, is, is the puppet that Putin completely dominates. Yeah, yeah, that's been interesting to observe, hasn't it, all the way through. Yeah. Um, let's talk about what's happening on the ground, the main battle areas in the east of Ukraine. Um, the Wagner mercenary group is pretty strong there. What is the latest? Yes, I mean, they're making progress at Bakhmut. They look as if they're, they're cutting it off. Uh, they've taken control of the main route into Bakhmut, the MO3, the main highway. And there's another one called the H32, which is a, um, a smaller road, and it's the only way out that the Ukrainians have now got. And that road is now being fought over north and south. If, if they have to withdraw, they'll have to withdraw down this minor road to the southwest, the H32. And I suspect that they may have to before too long. We know quite a lot now about Wagner... Um, uh, tactics, this mercenary group tactic, mm. using criminals in the front line. Um, th people say they commit human wave attacks. It's not quite that. What, they work in eight-man groups, eight-man units, and they, they send the first eight-man unit that they call the, the stormtroopers. They give them the best equipment, and they send them across a piece of ground that they're trying to take, and their job is to go until they get fired on, to go until they meet contact, and then they hit the ground and start digging furiously. And while they're on the ground, then Wagner's artillery comes in and hits ahead of them, and when they've done a little bit, they send the second group in to jump into the trenches that the first group have created. And then a third group of eight, and then a fourth group of eight. And they move forward, leapfrogging each other, digging trenches for the next group to go into. Now, Wagner say, traditionally, they say, well, four groups will take it. You know, stormtroopers and three groups of... They call them musicians who jump into the trench. I don't know why, but they call them musicians. They jump into the trenches. In reality, the reports are they've, ta they've taken 10, 12, 15 groups to capture 50 or 60 yards of territory. So they've been, they've been employing 120, 140 men sometimes, and they've been losing 70 or 80 like of fodder, them. fodder, basically. Absolutely, yeah. And, they, and they've, they've, been using, they've been losing up to 80% of their troops in taking 100 metres of ground. So it's... it's and and the, the Russian army can't do this because they won't. Um, I mean, you know, soldiers are more sensible in the Russian army and they don't get shot if they turn back. The thing about the Wagner people and the criminals that they've been using, the convicts that they've used, is that they, tell, they say, if you give up, if you turn back, we'll shoot you anyway. So you keep going forward. And there's a lot of anecdotal evidence from uh, Ukrainian defenders in Bakhmut saying, we can't believe it, these people, three or four of them get shot and the, and the other two keep on coming mm. because that's their best choice. Is, I mean, the best they can hope for is to be captured 
or, or wounded. Um, but if and they turn Bakhmut back... is the latest there? Is... That's what's happening. Yeah, yeah I mean, in, in Bakhmut itself, um, they've taken about a third of the city, the eastern third of the city. They probably won't get the rest of it. But they have taken the access roads. Yeah. And so I think the Wagner group will probably succeed in Bakhmut. But the cost has been enormous because of these tactics they use of always going forward in eight-man groups with no turning back allowed. Interesting. OK. Mm. Michael, thank you.